Auto Pilots and welcome to the first Mario Kart X-Wing on Out of Art Gaming. We have an absolutely fantastic game for you today. Joining me to talk through this and run through what's happening, we have our host of the Mario Kart. We have... Hello, it's Ben. Hi Ben, welcome back. You obviously put this on for us as something different and it was such a fantastic event so thank you for doing that um yeah. but this yeah, no this series of <laughs> this series of videos is the culmination of that so let's just quickly whilst it's still up on the screen we can see the teams but let's quickly run through those teams and then we'll have a brief overview of the rules so just quickly we've got four teams i'll run through white and blue you can run through red and green so white team we've got Tevin wexley in a t70 and we have Judo Eclipse in the Tire Advance X1 with extra upgrades, which will be displayed later. We have Blue Team with Zori Bliss in the BTA NR2 Y Wing and Gavin Sykes in the Naboo Starfighter. Um, did you want to run through red and green for us? Uh, yeah. So in red team, we've got Zari Bangle in the A Wing, Resistance A Wing. And uh, we've got Tycho um, in a Rebel A-Wing, so a um, an A-Wing red team there. And what was the other team? Green team. Green team, yeah. Green team. We've got another A-Wing, obviously a popular ship in this format. Uh, Jake Farrell. And we've got another Temin Wexley in the T-70. I mean... Tevin's ability just seems to scream that it's going to work really well in this, as do those A-Wings. So, yeah, there's said, quite a lot of interesting um, pilots, and obviously people have um, took some pilot abilities that will work quite nicely in this format. Yeah. Now, like I said, first couple of times, we're just going to run through the basic premise of what we're doing here with Mario Kart. Um, Ben's going to take us to the high level of the rules in a moment. But just with the list building for this, uh, each pilot was given four points to pick a ship, um, put whatever upgrades they wanted on there, but they weren't allowed any munitions, any devices, uh, ion or tractor beams. So it was a little bit limited on what they could have, but everything else was basically fair game. Everything that these ships have will be in the description below, but as you can imagine, there's a lot to go through, so we're not going to run through everything of what they had. I will point out as well, there is another ship on there. There is a back marker. We have Double Edge in the Tire Aggressor, which, firstly, we never see the Tire Aggressor very often, so it was lovely to see one on the board, just trying to shuffle us along and keeping up as a back marker for us, and you were actually flying double edge there yeah so not only did you get to host it you also got to have a bit of fun with it as well yeah why um, not? but did you have a quick run through of the rules for how we move how we shoot and how we interact with things for those that haven't played x-wing mario cup for and might be interested to give it a go sure so um so the basic rules then is we'll start off with movement so uh, I decided for this one that the ship that's in the first position moves first. That way you avoid any um, having to mark the ships and fly over them, etc. So the ships moved in order of their position. Um, if two ships were tied in a position, then the one with the inside line would move first. Uh, you could do your no normal actions, so normal X-Wing maneuvers. Um, however, if you did bump a um, side bit um, of the map, i.e. an obstacle, uh, then you would roll for damage. Um, and at the end phase, you would then be allowed to barrel roll or reverse boost off it using any one speed template, but you would get a stress. So that's how you can get away from awkward bumps on the side of the map. If you fly over a... Um, boundary then your ship would be destroyed uh, shooting wise again shooting would be done in um, position on the track order so the the first ship would shoot first 
uh, and then following uh, behind. So it's not done in initiative order. Uh, this also allows us to remove any need for road. It just speeds the game up. So make it nice and fun so you're not bogged down with road rules. Um, Absolutely. I mean, it does make it a lot quicker. I mean, yeah, it, it, it just slickens it up and it makes it, you know, of the, of the fun format it should be. We don't want to get bogged down with a lot of road rolls and stuff. Um, yeah. If the ship is destroyed, then uh, at the it's removed from the board and then it is then, at the end of the round, it is placed behind the um, checkpoint that it previously crossed. So you'll see on the map, you've got the blue lines. Those are the checkpoints. So if you pass a blue line, you if you die, you then go respawn back to that previous blue line. Um, turrets, now you'll, you'll see that the, there's uh, a turret and a at -AT. They've got fixed firing arcs. They will shoot first before any other ship, and they will shoot at every ship in its firing arc. Uh, the turret fires four dice unmodified. Uh, the ATAT slightly nasty for, fires four dice, but can change one hit, one result to a crit. Um, and the final bit um, of the brief overall of the rules is you'll notice there are power up uh, markers. It wouldn't be Mario Kart without that. If you go over one of those uh, markers, you will get a upgrade card which you can equip only one upgrade to one ship. Uh, in this one, we decided to have a bit of uh, fun and you could pass it on to your teammate if you, if you wanted to. Um, but you can only have one upgrade on, on your ship. If you um, pick up a upgrade card and you've already got one, or you can swap one out. Uh, and you'll notice a lot of the upgrades as we go through are, are generally action-based. So it'll be an action to use a card. Um, and that's essentially it. It's the first ship that crosses uh, the line. So we do one lap. Or um, if you're playing this in your store and you, you run out of time, uh, you only got a certain amount of time, just play to, to a certain time limit and whichever ship is in the uh, the, the, the front, uh, when, they, when the set time elapses is the winner. And that's essentially it. Um, there are obviously a few more um, little rules to add to that, but uh, Phil will put that in the... Um, description so you'll be able to see the full list of the rules or you can just message us on the on the chat and we're happy to explain any other rules absolutely so we'll have the we'll have like more details on the rules in the description below um you'll notice as well when they pass the power up points the power up will show up on the screen and on the right or left depending on where the tracker is you'll see what power up those ships have at the time so yeah this was just so much fun on the night there was actually nine of us around the table so two players per team um i was actually part of blue team uh so i had ben g flying gavin sykes and i was flying zori bliss um a really interesting pairing there and these pairings were actually randomly decided as we turned up so we hadn't pre-planned what we we're doing we all sort of picked our ships turned up, Ben dished out some coloured cards, we flipped them over, found out who we were flying with, and that's basically how we did it. Um, but yeah, we're just coming into the third phase now, so we've had a few bits of shooting. You'll see the uh, hit and shield markers on the sides as well there. Yeah, just let point out, so obviously you, you can play this, uh, you don't have to play this in teams, normally you'd probably just play, um, everyone has one chip each. Um, the reason why we played with teams, uh, and it actually worked really well, is we had a high player count. So if you've got, if you're running this and you've got a, a lot of players, so I think we had eight players for this. Uh, um, eight players plus you. We decided, uh, decided to make it as teams because you can imagine eight ships on one board at any one time would be pretty chaos. Um, so we decided to go with the teams, um, but. I would say four to six players would be great. Would be great for this. Yeah, and as you can see, we, we've obviously got a custom board. It's bigger than a standard X-wing mat. You can translate this to a normal three by three. You can make the mat bigger. You can basically run it however you want. Yeah, there's um, loads of tracks you can make up. Yeah, the main thing I would say is just have fun with it, and that's what we did. We just. There was just so much happening that it was just 
at no point were you ever not invested in what was happening. It was just really good fun. And yeah, I highly recommend it. If you get a chance to play Mario Kart with your friends, absolutely do it. Um, the All the resources are available online. Um, what we're going to do for our Patreons as well, we're actually going to put the full resources on our Patreon as well so they can actually just download that straight away. So if you are interested in getting those full resources quite quickly and you like what we're doing on the channel and want to support us, you can click the link in the description for our Patreon, sign up there. You'll get all of those resources, with all, the, all the card information for all the upgrades. Um, the upgrades actually, I will say, were done really cleverly as well because you had three sort of packs for them. You had a first place pack, a middle of the pack pack, and the last place pack, so that that way they had different things of what they could do to influence the game. Yeah, they kind um, of kind of balanced out the game. So you'll find that like the first place one would be a lot of like dropping bombs and stuff behind you, or banana bombs <laughs> in this one, and then like a lot of the last place ones would be stuff to like slow down the leaders. So like ions, everyone in front of you would get ions that sort of stuff. So it really helps to balance the game because what you don't want is one ship will just blast off into the distance and it's a foregone conclusion. The upgrades really do change that um, and it balances that out really nicely. So, I mean, you, you, you can make your own cards for this. Um, as I said, go wild, but the upgrade cards that we were using were absolutely fantastic for this. It's so good, so good fun. And there was one of them you might see later on. There was one crazy card which was a blooper which meant that everyone had to spin their dials uh, oh. without looking at them and just stuff like that was just so fun and for those mario kart aficionados the blue shell is in there as well but in fact and, that one that's bullet just bill. Bullet, bill. bullet bills there that one that gavin sykes has just triggered is actually the dud box and uh, immediately causes a damage to that ship, which was uh, great, especially when he's positioned right in front of a rather large turret. So we'll see if Gavin could actually survive that. Yeah. Now, another thing we did, obviously, for swapping players, when you reach the checkpoint, that's when we swap the ships out. So you'll see between phases, once you fully clear a checkpoint, um, the ships will swap out. So as long as Gavin survives there, Zori will tag in at the exact same spot that you ended your turn. However, if obviously Gavin gets completely nuked by that turret, Zori will start behind the checkpoint line. But looks like we've got Tycho going for the outside line there, and he has actually just pulled the in Invincibility Star, which is a really good card, and when the cards are played you will see a quick description of what they do up on the screen as they go active um so don't worry you will see what what the cards do when they are activated but again similar to how you get it in mario kart the shells are just going to tend to cause damage your bananas are different types of bombs it it was just such a great fun game but i can't i can't actually describe like how much fun we had doing this yeah so with the um if you do decide to play in teams so phil was mentioning about the swap out so we wanted to give everyone a, a good amount of time playing so as you said as you mentioned when you pass the, the checkpoint at the end phase you swap out but you keep you keep your you keep your damage and everything the, the only time you reset everything is when you die. So when you swap out, you still keep all your damage. Um, and target locks remain. Um, and yeah, it, it, it worked out really well, the swapping. And it made it quite interesting because you'll notice, for example, I think on your team, Phil, you had a really tanky but slow Y-Wing, but then your partner had a really fast ship. Yeah. So it made it quite interesting in the way they were swapping out. Yeah, it, it was, like I said, it was a really fun combination of ships there. I mean, 
all four of the teams had like quite interesting combination. This so is the got, turret like, firing. Yeah, that was a that was not too bad though. Gavin managed to tank that quite nicely. So when and if Gavin tacks back in later, he's still fairly healthy. Um, but yeah, like I said, the combination of like teams that we had on there. Obviously, we've got the double A wing, but of both different varieties, which is quite fun because they do obviously they do slightly different things. But also, when we mentioned about the first player, the player in first place shooting, not many ships were able to take advantage of that because not many ships actually had turrets, so they've been a bit no. of an awkward position there. In fact, I think it was only myself and Double Edge. Who actually had a yeah, turret? I'm obviously, the, I'm the resistance they really has more one. Well, with the ships they've taken, they're obviously quite fast yeah. ships, and uh, I know you've got like a hotshot blaster and everything you can chuck yeah. on there, but it's only. So I was thinking really... a Tire SF would be pretty good for this. Oh, a Tire SF. And it's got a really good dial as well, it can go quite yeah. quick. There, um, there, there is a surprising amount of ships. So you're, you're like, when you list build first, you're thinking, "Oh, that could be quite good." Because we were going through it, and we were we were discussing it for a couple of days before. And we were like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, striker would be quite cool because you can, as long as you're not bumped, you can do your ailerons." And um, there was a couple of com interesting combinations yeah. you could have had. We did obviously ban slam as well, though, because that would be a bit of an unfair advantage. So. No oh yeah, for classes. Good, good point. I'll just so obviously this is something you can house rule to try and balance it. Um, when I sent out the requirements, uh, I did ban a couple of things. Obviously, slam could be quite broken in this. Um, dead man switch. Um, oh, that could be funny. Could could be a bit abused. Um, and you've got, really got to think of what things could be. A bit broken in this format. Um, auto blasters um, could be quite nasty, and yeah. obviously any munitions and ion weaponry. Um, you, you, you'll get that sort of stuff in the upgrade cards anyway. So you want to try and make it as balanced as possible. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend not having any ships that can slam. I mean, Josh was a bit disappointed that you said no dead bad. So he's actually flying Juno Eclipse this time. But he and, was a little bit disappointed about no dead bad switch. And Scott really wanted to take his Nantex with tractors, and unfortunately, tractors could be a bit nasty as well. So no yeah. shenanigans. We want we wanted where the ships were interacting with each other. It was more um, clean interactions of just shooting rather than those crazy ones with the like ion and tractor and stuff. So it was just a lot easier. And plus, the upgrade cards just had enough shenanigans in them to make quite a mess of things as it was but there is the green snap making his way across there getting another banana didn't, bomb didn't so. quite get out of the terror arc but it's got a nice shot so obviously phil you've now tagged in so we've now the zippy naboo is tagged out but now we've got a tanky y-wing in front yeah, a lot of health on there. Obviously, wartime loadout is on there because you'd be crazy not to. Um, and Zori is actually going to be quite a handy pilot because her ability as well is just great. Oh, what's that? You've done an action and I've got it on my action bar. Well, I'll take a stress and do it as well. Which, nice. when you're in first place, actually works really well. And yes, we do have Bowser riding on top of that Tycho That is there. great. Yeah. Applaud Scott for bringing that. I mean, going forward, I might have to pick up a lot of those little uh, figurines to see if we can actually get them on there in future. But here we go. Here is the star piece being used. So with that, you can boost using any one or two speed template and you're immune to any damage until the next activation phase. So it's not a bad spot to be have that when you've got a turret facing you down because well, it can't do anything. So that's that's a pretty good upgrade card to have, actually. And obviously, we've just put that shield mark there to remind, yeah. Cool, so White is... Looks like he's going to have to go around that little piece of rock. There's just a little piece yeah. of rock just jutting out, just makes it a little bit awkward. 
Yeah. Now, obviously, you can, you can, your temp template can go off the board as long as, you know, when you've completed your maneuver, the ship remains wholly back on the board. Oh, and there is the fake box causing some damage onto the white team, Temin. The thing is, the, what was really fun about this as well is obviously myself and green team, but blue and green, we, we've obviously rocketed quite far ahead at this point, but it's still we could still be pegged back so quickly. Yeah, and, you end up being a coming a target. Yeah, and there's the triple mushroom from you giving you the three speed boost, which is insane. Yeah. There is a golden mushroom that's so fun. So the golden mushroom allows you to boost using any template you want. But yeah, At, like all of the upgrades feel feel right. They feel like they've got that Mario Kart flavor, but in an X-wing sense. It just worked really well there. I mean, this is and a this is a quite a good in. format just to practice flying a ship, a particular ship. Yeah. I mean, just the, the different sort of ways round you've got to get round things is quite nice as well. I mean, if you look where blue and green are, they've got a couple of little obstacles there making it so it's not quite a nice, easy, straight run down there. Um, with the AT-80, you've got to do the loop round through the legs of the AT-80 as well to be able to actually go around. So you can't you have to basically get in that thing's arc twice. And if you see, yeah. you've obviously got the track back in the top left-hand corner showing you the, the route round you have to take. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to put... Uh, so, if you're making a track, try and add in some shortcuts, some different routes. Also, crossovers are really good. So, you'll, you'll see by the at there's a crossover. So, um, that allows, you know, ships to try and stop first place ships it maximizes the space as well and the area yeah. that you could actually play in it gives it quite a nice one and obviously we did say as well that should there be a boundary in the way just like normal x where you can shoot through the obstacle uh, it gives you the obstacle bonus obviously but it's just again it's another another way it sort of ties those games in And weirdly enough, you might be the back marker, but you're currently in third place, Ben. So that you're not doing a great job as being yeah, the back marker at this I point. Was, yeah, I got a bit carried away. Uh, I'll probably get put back in my place shortly. I mean, you got that three speed boost and thought, yeah, why not? Let's go for it. But yeah. I think I've got the. Well, I think I've got the only ship that can't boost. Uh, yeah, because I can. Yeah, uh, Zori can boost, but it's red. Uh, every other ship on here can boost. Yeah, it's just you that can't boost. So you did go for that sort of slower ship to try and keep the back mark, and then red and white took the long way round. I mean, I was a bit surprised that Tycho didn't try and go further round the tree so you could avoid the turret arc there. But we've got but our he, swap he out, so we now have. Yeah, we now have Zari and Jake on the board in place of Tycho and Snap. So again, the A-Wings obviously they got they're so fast, but they don't have that much health, which is where it could get they've got to get as much distance as quickly as possible. See if they can reach that checkpoint. Oh, oh just that's missing that obstacle. Really there. Close. Yeah. Just missing that obstacle there. That is I was eyeing that up for a while just to double check. So I didn't. Oh. And we have the green shell. So choose the front or rear guides, then place the five stroke template in the guide. The nearest ship touching the template suffers two damage, and that's an action. So, uh, Jake damage. joins the fray and immediately gets hit in the face. So this Tycho's yeah, ty only got two health. Oh dear. Yeah. So quite 
in a very dangerous spot. That's a long run between those two checkpoints that you can, you could end up having to go all the way back, which is can be quite tricky, to be honest. Yeah. Just seeing what action Jake is going to do, and it's a boost trying to steal first place and probably get out. Of yeah, and he didn't stay there for the shot, but with only two steel, with two health, it's probably a good call to just not get shot at. He does still first place though, so so he will be moving first and shooting first. However, so his ability triggering. Sneaky copy. Which puts me back in arc. <laughs> puts me back in arc and first place. Although a bit... A bit close to the trees, but I believe... R4, R4, R4 will help you out. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. You've got to take R4. It's so good. I, th I think in this format, R4 is just... It's really good, especially if you've got one of those... And I think I'm getting shot by the turret. See, this oh, is yeah, where I right. really need a boost. Yeah. And I don't have a boost. I was trying to think about the barrel roll, but yeah, me being back marker, I'm in the middle of the pack and I'm getting shot at by turrets. I yeah. mean, that boost, even if you did the boost forward the way the arc on there is, it will still get you. But you've just picked up the blue shell and you've used it straight away. So the ship, yeah. apparently in first place, receives two ion tokens and a face-up damage card. Yeah, so um, the cards were made when version 1 was around. Uh, so that's why you'll see two ion tokens, but really it, it only needs one. It only needs one. And we said how tanky Zori was. Zori is down to two hull. And she hasn't been on the board that long, so Doesn't take long. lots of health. Oh, yeah. is that a bump? No, it's oh, not. Oh, imagine if that was a bump, that would have been a turret, a juicy turret shot. But he should be I'll able to get out of that. The problem I mean, is, if he boosts, he gets out of the turret, but then he could get shot. Yeah. By double edge. What, what do you do? I think I would prefer to boost out of there and not, yeah. not take the four dice shot. Because double edge would have, at best, a three dice shot. Yeah, neither neither have got mods because I used the yeah. I used the shell instead of the action, which is risky yeah. because I've not got a focus token for a turret shot. But I'm a back marker. I'm not playing for position. Yeah, you you were just you were I'm playing just so that you could yeah, so you could have fun, which is the main thing. Now we're going to obviously put this up in three parts just to make it a bit easier to digest we will probably put the entirety up as one long form as well at a later date and we are hoping to do some more mario kart in the future um this has taken a long time for us to get to the point of getting it up for you guys before we even got to the commentary we spent close to 40 hours editing the footage so it's not a quick one for us, but in all honesty, it was so worth it. We had we had so much fun playing. I just need I needed to get this up for you guys to see alternate variations of how you can play this game. Yeah, it's just nice to have a a bit of a break from standard X Wing. Get everyone together, um, you know, run this at your local. Uh, we also we also chucked in some prizes, you know, just if you want to make an event, chuck in some prizes for a, for a second, third. Also, if you get a kill, you know, bounty prize. It's just a, it's yeah. just a really really good format. Um, you can also add this to. I've, I've seen this being added to tournaments for the second day. Yeah, for people that didn't make the cut. For people that didn't make the cut, this is a this is a great format for a bit of fun on a Sunday. 100%. I 100% agree on that. It's a good little side event uh, that you can throw up there. It's a good sort of interesting type of demo event to play for people as well so they can get used to the concept of how the ships move because you've obviously taken off the munitions as well. Kind of simplifies yeah, it a little you, bit. 
you're, you're only concentrating on one ship with limited upgrades so it's it's very yeah it's very beginner friendly you uh yeah. you can have you, you know you can have someone running it and going through the rules as as, as you play it's a good way to get into it oh the turret is I taking the that turret too much so fairly bunched up everyone's at interesting angles And this... Yeah, the, the approach through. No one's really got that straight approach, just straight down there. Ooh, um, nice the turret is turret has been a little bit ineffectual there. Both yourself and Snap have laughed and dodged that off. But there's a couple of choices. Well, I would normally say there's a couple of choices that people have. Do they try and take out Zori, who's the front place ship? But I don't think anyone actually has Ark, so. Jake's only got two, so is there an opportunity there? Oh, that's two. Could this be a kill for Zori? Yeah, we had the camera in a little bit of an awkward position <laughs> for the <laughs> dice. Trying to, to chuck the uh, dice in the cam in the tray. Yeah, it, it's something. Again, this is something when I come to do another one, I will reevaluate, but. Eventually we've got people to run around. Oh, just the one damage. So Jake is still alive. But that does does have other people shooting. Yeah, I think I think that's a no-brainer who Zari's gonna go oh, for. Because it's the three. only target Zari has, but yeah, range three. Mm. Got, got two shots coming into you. Do you spend that focus? Is that for, he has an no, evade, doesn't he? Oh, he does. Oh, it's an evade. Yeah, yeah. It's an evade. Yeah. Okay, so Jake, Jake lives. survives that one. Then you get to shoot next. Do you steal that kill, or I see three dice there, so I anticipate you're going into Zari. Yeah, I think I went with Zari. Yeah. There's the point there at Zari. Not a bad choice because you can double tap if needed with your dorsal. So I get a second shot. Looks like the second shot was actually missed there. Oh, didn't take the second shot. I did rerun the tape to check that because I was like, ah, oh, that doesn't seem right. But now it's Snap's turn to take a shot at Zari. Has the target lock. Just going to spend the focus, saving the target lock for later. Interesting. Probably know you can't actually take Zari out, but still gets the damage through. See, sometimes it's good to be be at the back, as long as you're not too far away from the pack, because you're free to do whatever you want, essentially. Yeah, and those last place upgrades as well. So Juno is oh, now, now in. Juno's a good pilot for this as well. It's nice like, that people what, took different ships. Yeah, J Josh was Josh was sort of querying it with me because he's so used to flying scum. He wanted to fly something different. And when he said about Juno, I was like, that was that was genuinely one of the ships I actually looked at. Um, but I've been trying I've been trying to do clear of these ships I normally go with, which is why I've gone for resistance this time. And I did resistance in the Aces High last week as well. Uh, and that's the Boo upgrade that I've picked up there. Not very relevant right now, but could be handy later. But obviously only an Ion move there, unfortunately, which is a little bit disappointing. I would have liked to have uh, maybe done the too hard or get a bit further down the track. Oh, A-Wing turning in. I don't like that. Really hunting you down and... A lightning and yeah, don't card. like that. Don't like that. Anyone coming at me so fast. Yes, all ships ahead of you gain ion tokens if I remember rightly. Yeah, so that's a, that's a good catch up balancing card to stop people getting too far ahead. Good, looks good like, barrow. however, looks like, however, that Jake elected to take the 
to keep the banana bomb that he had instead. Oh, that's a nice that's, boost for position. That's a good line. Yeah, good line to clear through that checkpoint as well. And uh, looks like Zori's just taken advantage of that boost. So, question is, are you going to get across that checkpoint? Are you going to survive this round? Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to that last blue line, which is quite far away. Yeah. I mean, I get the advantage so of being able to shoot line. first. Yeah, I get to shoot first, and Jake's on one, so hopefully I can take Jake out and nothing is at range of me. It looks like Zari... It's on the borderline of range three there, so I could be okay. But the red shell is out, and the closest ship in the firing arc of your choice suffers two damage. Oh, that's nice. So that that would be that would be Jake gone. But would you want to take out Jake if you were the Awin? Would you want to take out Jake, or would you want Jake maybe save it? And would you want Jake to take out the Y wing? Oh, so kind okay. of a bit of a thingy play using other people. Yeah, because you could you could save that shell, but um, a kill's a kill, uh, and yeah. we were play, and we were playing for prizes. Um, so yeah, and it's definitely more entertaining just to take yeah. the opponents out as well. I mean, murder, we're murder death kill. Yeah, murder yeah. death kill, absolutely. I mean, if you're not throwing dice to kill other ships or red shells, what are you doing? That is a bump from Juno, though. Does clear the turret. That's, that is an advantage, I suppose. And he picked up a triple mushroom. Yeah, won't be able to use it because, again, as we said, the majority of these upgrades are actions. Some of them are triggered in activation phase, but most of them are action-based. He's just right. checking. Does Zari have a shot there? Probably obstruction. Um, yeah, it's going to be an obstruction range three. Oh, good. It survives. So I should, unless something really crazy happens. She'd cross the line. Out. Yeah, clear that line and tag Gavin back. And Gavin's only got one health, though, so it's a dangerous one. Oh, more damage going through on Tugari there. Obviously, between you and Juno, you could really double down and take Zari out, so then... doing the shell rather than taking an evade or focus. Yeah, sometimes it's a tricky decision because you've got these action cards. And you're like, oh this yeah, will be really yeah. this will be really good. But you are losing your action to do yeah. it. Which is sometimes because a bit difficult. Action, yeah, because they're an action it made it really tricky. But the cards That's are so fun that you just... Yeah. A lot of the times you don't really care and just go, you know what? It's on it. I'm going to have a bit of fun. I don't need a focus or a lay token. I'm going to chuck a shell at you. Yeah, and that Zari down. So we've lost two A-Wings this turn. So the fragility of those A-Wings has become apparent. But the Y-Wing who has taken a hammering is still there. Oh, so great. all of those health oh. works. It's a shame that your teammate's so badly damaged. Yeah. I mean, if I can get a good position for my teammate and the rest of you, just stay a little bit further back. Just hold off for us. Uh, and me do, me okay. doing an absolute rubbish job of being a bat marker. I mean, you're in second at the moment. I mean, what happened there? You were, you were Everyone in front of me kept dying. Said, we even said you were supposed to essentially be the cloud that like 
pulled people back onto the track and instead you were just like, no, yeah. come on guys. You're, you're more like you're more like the safety car in front at the moment. But yeah, I'm I'm genuinely considering how much damage I took in those two phases before this, I was very impressed to make it to that line. And I think people were just enjoying going straight for me as well. I don't know why. Uh, oh, just just scraping that. some paint off that rock. Got you a nice line though. Uh, a bank in the next turn will get you past that rock nice and easy, so you'll have a straight through to the next checkpoint. If Juno doesn't try and absolutely murk you there. Juno's like, right, you should be behind me. It's time to put that to rights. Yeah. More directly using the triple oh. mushrooms for a three speed boost. Good Juno little bit of leap from there. And Juno is very healthy at the moment as well with full health, so confident that she will still be there for the next turn. But we've got those new back markers coming back around. So Tycho is back on the board looking for some vengeance. It's surprising how quick you can catch up. Um, yeah. Because especially with the upgrade, with the upgrades, a lot of the last place cards do give you a lot of boosts and stuff. So you can catch up really quick. So oh, even, well, though, you you, even though you get wiped out and put to the back, you can't, yeah. And now, yeah, this is the really nasty one that's a the lot of fun. Has been, the ink has been triggered, so next round, all ships ahead of you must select their manoeuvre dial by spinning the dial face down. And we said you had to spin it at least twice, so we don't know what people are going to be doing. There could be some, cases. Some of us are in a really narrow channel. Yeah. Not, not great. Uh, could work out really well to be honest could work out absolutely hilarious but knowing that that's been played some of them have got to be a bit careful where they end up positioning themselves I mean I'm looking you're not looking too badly but Tycho could potentially be three turns to the right off the board so could Juno um, I mean I don't have to worry about it because I'm about to tag out but yeah, that uh, the ink is going to be an interesting one, to say the least. Hmm. There's a nice little conga line going down the middle there at the moment, so... I foresee those shots just going forward through. But that turret is getting another nice little pop at an X-Wing this round. Yeah, I mean he's he's got he's got enough health. He should be all right. Oh, and he's picked up Bullet Bill. So Bullet Bill allows you to manoeuvre twice in one turn. Any ship that you cut on the way gets a factor beam. Quite thematic. That, that is quite nice, actually. He's got a decision though. Does he stick with Bullet Bill or does he just use the lightning to ionise everyone in front of him? Like yeah, he's really an upgrade. So it looks like he has kept the lightning. Turret's done a hit and a crit. Um, both of those are going through. And obviously, we are suffering the crit damages as well. They're just not up on the display for the ships, just because it was too much to have that in there as well. But they, we are suffering those crits as they pop up. I mean, that's one damage onto Juno from Double Edge. Nice. And double edge, out. double edge does. If, if in case if anyone's wondering why double edge is throwing three dice, double edge does have a stealth device. Yeah, stealth device on a tire tire grasser. Yeah, yeah, why not? And psycho not taking any damage that round, but that's going to be it for part one 
of this Mario Kart series, guys. We will be having part two coming up and very soon, so you'll see exactly how fun that ink is. Um, but I just want to say, Ben, firstly, thank you for hosting this for us and thank you very much for joining us on the commentary. Yeah, absolute pleasure, Phil. And guys, the part two will be coming in the new year. So don't forget, like this video, subscribe to the channel. Have an absolutely fantastic new year and we will see you next time.